This is my 1986 13-foot Boston Weller I purchased recently. The uh, drain tubes in it are original to the boat and uh, they don't look too good. So I'm going to pop those out and uh, put in some new drain tubes. The drain tubes are kind of challenging on this boat because there's a very small access area on this side to get to the inside of the boat and then on the back side the stern has quite a bit of an angle on it and so uh, die that are designed to flare brass um, they're designed for 90 degree angles and that uh, makes it pretty much impossible without some modifications so let's get started to get out your old tube you're going to take and come down here and use a flathead screwdriver like this and you basically just come and and hit and try to collapse this tube down so that it goes uh, you know inside here this little lip and once it does that you can usually just take a hammer and tap it and make it go out this is where I had taken the existing tube in and I tapped it all in there and then I was able to hammer it back out and get it out of the uh, the boat all right, so um, these are some dies. I bought them off of Amazon. As you can see, I've cut down some of the size. Normally, the uh, the part would come out to right about here. And so I made this one to where it has a little bit more of a extrusion out there. This one's almost flat right there to where it starts to bevel the edge. But you can buy these off Amazon for like 13 bucks, or you can go buy the more expensive ones from West Marine for like, I think they're as much as 50. Um, but this one, you know, I'm cutting it down, so I wanted to get something cheap. So anyway, this is what I'm using. Uh, I've got a piece of pipe here. This is brass, one-inch brass tubing. The Boston Weller 13-foot has the, the back of the stern there has a pretty steep angle. And so this is the angle for the tube that needs to be. It needs to be 12 inches long. And uh, I think if you're going to do this, I recommend go ahead and cutting the end here to your angle. And then make sure you leave... You know three or four inches on the end so in case you screw this up when you're flaring it it's just not what you want you can just snip it off and keep going you have you can retry it several times um, then once you get this flared to where you want you can put it in the boat mark it off and then flare the other side once it's in the boat with the, the o-rings and everything so uh, you know air hammer um, nothing special this, any air hammer can work you can get these as cheap as 13 bucks off of uh, Harbor Freight uh, I bought one of these, these little things that hold in the uh, the interchangeable pieces. They're like two bucks at Harbor Freight. So I cut this one down. You can kind of see that the piece right here is uh, cut off. Like here's one that hasn't been cut off. You can see it's got this loop. So I cut that off right there with my Dremel. And um, yeah, and then I hacked off the end of this pointy um, piece here that normally just has a point on it. So then I could take the dies <clears throat> and put them in here and... Uh, go through and, and round out this tubing, flare it, using the air hammer. So I got a little sander wheel here. I'm just gonna quickly smooth out the end here. All right, so this is my tube that I'm actually gonna try to use in the boat. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and anneal it real quick. You don't want to over anneal it, otherwise the tube will buckle on you. I think that's enough there. You can just start to see the bluing on it. Um, I've practiced a lot. My practice piece is quite a lot shorter now, but uh, I was able to get some uh, pretty good uh, bevels on here. It looks pretty nice. But what I found was, you know, I've got two different uh, 
dies that I cut down to different lengths. I got a short one and a longer one. I've been starting with the longer one and then flipping to the shorter one. But what I found was whenever you start this out, um, you're going to want to focus the pressure pushing towards the out, uh, upper edge right here. And then once you start that, you'll start to see this flare. Then you have to back off because you can over flare that section and it will just wrap over and there's no save in it. So usually once I get that, then I focus the pressure back and forth to get the sides flaring out. And then hopefully if everything goes right, the bottom part right here will start to flare. And then I switch over to the smaller die and then just work my pressure on the bottom here, flaring this, trying to stay away from the top edge. Um, I'm trying to do this without looking at the camera. I think I'm a little bit off, but anyway, uh, This is the piece that I was working with, and uh, it flared really nice. So that's how it looks on the boat. I mean, it's a crappy looking paint job on the boat right now. I wanna just get it to where it's uh, seaworthy, not gonna leak. Just in case you're wondering if this is challenging to do, here are my attempts from the day, and I think there's two other attempts that I left on the floor out in the shed near my vise that I was using to cut these off. So yeah, uh, have patience because it's not easy. Uh, I wanted to show these things. So um, Tom on The Whole Truth, he, uh, he had a machinist of his fix him up some dies and they cut them down and they look very similar to this. These are modeled after his, but um, what I did, because he said he wouldn't sell them, is I went into a CAD program online and basically built these up in CAD. And then I had them printed using uh, uh, SNL. I'll, I'll follow up, put it in the comments. But anyway, SNL um, printing so that it's the strongest possible nylon that it could be. And what this allows is it allows you to get those nice angles. And uh, this is 3 8 inch threaded rod. I've got a longer one because it's got to go for 12 inches. But in the AutoCAD uh, program, I was able to test and make sure the pipe wasn't hitting. And so haven't tested it yet, but uh, it cost me a whopping $14 to have these made and shipped. So if these work, this is going to be a godsend for a lot of people on the forums that really want a cool toy like Tom has, but don't want to spend four or five hundred dollars to make one and if these break then you know I'll know enough to know like I can flip it up and go to stainless steel the site that I had these printed at they'll even do stuff in gold silver uh, titanium <laughs> cost a lot more but uh, I think stainless not stainless steels but just regular old metal you know steel to have these was like 80 bucks um, each so be like two hundred dollars if I had to go up to steel and I don't know if I want to do that yet but hopefully these will work and then I can get the inside done and have this support the outside whenever uh, whenever it comes time to mount it in the boat
So, I'm trying to make sure you can see this. So the top part right there cracked. We had a washer. Well, maybe that's not a crack. That's just kind of, it's deformed, it looks. Well, it was looks definitely like. bent looking. It didn't look It's normal. definitely deformed, but this was the ball from the outside. We had a washer there, and the washer actually pulled in close enough to where the washer was hitting the top there. So, while it didn't fail, they're a little worse for wear. But, let's clean this up and see how it looks. So in the end, this is what I ended up using. Of course, I used the longer rod, but this is the way I worked it out. Uh, this was on the outside of the boat. We had the brass, had the two 3D uh, printed pieces here. I really feel like you definitely need these once you have that really steep incline on the stern. Uh, and here, I just used the regular piece here. Uh, this ball, I'm not sure how much it helped. It definitely deformed. It, it's got it's threaded now. Uh, from just the pressure, and you, know, you can see that it actually pushed up into the up into the uh, metal there. So if I was doing this every day, I'd just spring to have these done in steel, and then I wouldn't have a problem with it, and then everything would just be great. Um, but there's that, and here is the final result of the the job. I think it turned out pretty good. It's not perfect. It's definitely good enough. There's the inside and the outside. I think it looks pretty good. Considering how much work it is, uh, I don't plan to do it anytime soon. Hopefully never. <laughs> Who knows if I have to redo it whenever I strip the boat. Hopefully I won't have to do that. Hope this helps someone out.